Hey guys, welcome to episode 13. I'm Athena. Charlie. This is my husband, Charlie. And we have the pleasure of doing business together and have been doing business together for uh, many, many years. And we're just grateful that you're here joining us on the Raise Up podcast. And before we get started, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube page and um, you could join us uh, at raiseupmindset.com and submit a question. We'd love to answer questions on these uh, recordings. So um, without further ado, the subject that we're talking about today is accountability and integrity in in just our lifestyle and in our business and how this is absolutely necessary if you are going to have any hope of scaling your company. And so um, early on, I would say probably really, what was the first measure of accountability that we put into place in our business? I think it might've been like contracts for our customers. Well, I mean, I think even before that, just, yeah, I mean, contracts, uh, working with customers, you know, on a day and day and basis. I mean, it's, uh, it has grown. Um, you can't say what we were in 2000 is what we are today. And you can't say what we were in 2005 is what we were in 2010. Um, the company is always evolving and changing. And part of that is the accountability and the integrity of what we have in our company as that uh, it goes. So um, you had to first start out that we owned two small six passenger limousines and a bus as we first started off. So we were the limo guys. We were the ones that were doing your weddings. We were the ones doing your bachelor parties proms. and proms, things like that. Mm-hmm. And that business is still there. It's just a small part of what that business is now. So um, working with our customers and uh, I'll, I'll say one right off the bat was, you know, working with Tony from logistics, really, there was a lot of uh, groups that were coming up and things like that. And it was scheduling and planning and, and accountability of where we were out with them and to make sure that we had the staffing and uh, our customers are so important to us. And then she really kind of brought us along and then, you know, we worked with other other management yeah. companies and then really getting in with the airlines and working with the airlines that was a huge commitment and things that we did with those guys too and you know um the uh, airlines usually like to work with a national carrier that they can work with here and then san francisco and la and seattle and portland all that stuff one company they can deal with it because they deal with one organization structure we're not like that up here in alaska <clears throat> um we don't have a lot of the big ones up here so uh they really rely on locals and yeah the locals are really what uh, drives us. And they like that too, because you know, all, I, I think a lot of uh, cities should try to work within the local levels and work with uh, their vendors there. But you know, um, any one of those airlines, they can call me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we'll take care of it. And we're honest in our prices. We're, you know, we, we, we treat everybody the same. We wanna be uh, good partners. So. Yeah, and I think you really nailed it, is that you have to have this foundation of integrity. And I don't just mean integrity as uh, you're, you're not going to tell a lie. I mean true to who you are. And if who you are is that you're going to do the right thing when you're presented with the opportunity, then that is really going to just give you a launching pad to um, scale your business. If you're building this reputation of not doing the right thing, then the chances are you're gonna be working with low level characters who are gonna be um, doing shady things. And it's like you have a decision to make. You've got, you're building this foundation and how are you going to build it? And then I think the next thing that you were mentioning was allowing your customers to teach you what levels of accountability they need. And is that something that you can do? And I think that's really how we've scaled as, a, as in terms of our customers. When I read a contract and they, they ask for things, I sincerely ask, our, I mean, I ask myself, can I provide that to them? And um, because I never sign anything that I don't understand and I don't sign something with the intention of breaking the agreement because I believe that an agreement is only as good as the two people that are signing it or the two organizations that are signing it. And if they don't stick to it, then it's no good. It's worthless. Well, I think that's why there's an agreement. And we've done lots of denments and contracts because a lot of these companies will have a flat contract that like they send template. out to, yeah, yeah a template and it's a, it's an RFP it's a it's a contract that sends out to all the vendors and 
Um, sometimes they take that highest RFP because that one makes the most sense. And But, you know, if you're a current vendor out there and you're looking to get a contract, but it says that you have to have 5 million worth of insurance plus another 20 million on the backside, well, you're not going to find a lot of insurance companies are going to give you a $20 million yeah. backside because that's going to put the liability so much on them. And what's that cost rise? So, so we've had to go back to our vendors and saying, hey, the standard's $5 million plus, you know, whatever else we carry for a million of this or general liability. But yeah. what you're asking for is not going to be realistic and we might not be your customer. And, and, you know, we see this time and time again is that you get these bigger corporations that really want to make sure that their people are covered. And we understand that to a point. But sometimes we can't meet those needs and we have to let them know that up front. Um, well, and, and I think how I frame that is I will let them know what the industry standard is, especially in our region, because one of the things that I wanna be really mindful of is that we don't wanna put ourselves in a situation where we're uninsurable. And so having, and thankfully our safety record has um, provided us with uh, low claims and we haven't had anything that we are we we consider a catastrophe on our insurance policy but no. if you are insured to such astronomical limits that um, if you get hit with a claim of that magnitude then you're not insurable anymore no one else is going to pick you up and it's like um, if they do it'd be so astronomical in the rates at a 40 or 50 or 100 percent um, way more than what you're paying. You have to, again, have those relationships with your your insurance company, your broker, um, and then asking them, you know, hey, they're getting me into a situation that you know, they're asking for an extra 10 million on top yep. of this. And your broker is gonna be able to tell you, hey, that's that's not within industry lights, or hey, another million, I can, I can go to another vendor and get another million on top of that. But you don't wanna insure yourself for this much money. You don't wanna put yourself in this situation, as, as Athena was saying, is that you become uninsurable because you could have a good 15 or $20 million company, have a one bad claim or something happens, a death or something happens, maybe you're involved in, but you're not part of the person, and all of a sudden you can't reopen your doors the next day because you have no insurance to be able to do so. Yeah. And then are we serving our clients then? Are we serving the current clients that we're taking care of, the backbone of our company? No, we're, we're trying to take something on that we probably shouldn't have took on, yeah. nor should we have put that on there so every customer is not for you and when it comes through but we haven't had I don't think any customers haven't worked with our, our no, within our limits or really. what we have and and we maintain 95% of all the airlines at the airport now so it's it's a uh, it's it's just working with your vendors and making them explain why we can't go to what they're looking for and then usually they attend it and it's a done deal yeah. and we sign it I but don't sign anything without reading it because you have no idea what you're signing. And then all of a sudden something does happen. It says in your contract, cause it's written with your ink and your blood saying that you own this and all of a sudden you don't have it. And now all of a sudden you're in a bigger lawsuit. So. And this is where your attorneys, you should have a business attorney that you kick things to from time to time. And the attorney's going to advise you on how to position your assets with limited liability companies or um, so it's not just a matter of, uh, being accountable in this insurance policy, but it's also like, how do I have my organization structured so that if I do get hit with a claim, that it's not going to bring my company down? And so um, those are all important questions that you need to have a, a good CPA on your team, you need to have a, a good business attorney on your team. And um, we have several attorneys that we work with because some tend to be more conservative than others and and vice versa and so we want to make sure that we're getting a really well-rounded example of um, good advice yeah absolutely and and charlie's right you know i i have gone to the customer and said i can absolutely do this uh, additional layer or this particular type of professional business insurance that you're asking for, I'm going to need some time to get some quotes and that's going to be reflected in the price of the bid. And you know, in, in a lot of these places you're looking for the very best bid or they're looking for the middle of the person because usually they don't want the, the lowest or they don't want the highest. So they're kind of in the middle. So yeah. it's just Good a matter of time people are. at it. But again, as Athena's saying, um, we want to make sure that we're 
price inappropriate because they're asking for something that's going to cost us another twenty thousand dollars how do we absorb that into that contract where at yes, the rates we were giving them in that. the very beginning you have to readjust your prices and then sometimes when they see the price adjustment they'll say hey you know we don't need it yes. but <laughs> just like when you're going to ask for something you're asking for it you're asking for these things because you want to get the right price in there you want to make sure that you're getting the best deal possible and if somebody's willing to give them all that they're looking for they look at it as a bonus yes. so you know be mindful and the other part of being overinsured is you don't want to be underinsured either. Yes. You don't want to get stuck with a claim that all of a sudden you're carrying a 56 passenger motor coach and you know and you have a bad accident and 20 people get hurt out of it. Well, your one million dollar coverage is probably not going to be able to cover all no. that. So then they're going to come after you personally. So the other side of that of the accountability and integrity, everything we're looking for, is to make sure that we are covered, the driver's covered, the company is covered. And that you're structured right. Because yes. if you're if you've structured your business in a place where you are like a liability a limited liability company, then you want to make sure that your level of accountability is not signing a personal guarantee that you're taking responsibility in the event that the company falls short. So these are all like various levels of accountability with customers in the service that we're providing that um, we have learned over time through education pieces, workshops, and working with our customers. But I don't. I want the message to be heard that you don't have to say yes to everything. No. You need to do. You need to say yes to the things that you can actually do, and, and do well, and and hold that line of integrity, and accountability. I mean, the integrity and accountability kind of goes hand in hand. I mean, don't try to get in the airline business if you have two cars and they're requesting six cars because. Yes. You won't be able to double dip. If anything, you're going to get yourself. You probably, if it say six, you're going to probably need eight or nine, just because you're going to have breakdowns, you're going to have service failures, you're going to have somebody that's late, you're going to have somebody that didn't come off the plane. The planes are, I don't want to say never on time, but they they fluctuate quite a bit, and you have to fluctuate with them. Weather uh, is a huge factor. Um, we we just took a plane the other day and we were coming home, and as we were pushing back, somebody got mildly sick and puked all over the eighth row. And as we were pushing back, uh, Tug came and pushed us back to the gate and we were an hour and 20 minutes delayed. Yeah. So that hour and 20 minute delay delayed our drivers, our pickups, everything else like that. So that's a domino effect. Yes. So if you're looking at some of these things that you're doing, just make sure that you're you're appropriate because sometimes you only get one chance to get that first airline or that second that airline. First impression, yeah. And then all of a sudden you start showing up late and things like that, they start backpedaling immediately because to them, they can't have service failures on their side because they got to compensate people too. So that's, again, don't get in get into more than what you can do. You know, and I think that entrepreneurship is this balance of, like there's plenty of things that we decided that we were gonna do and that we believed that we, we could do it. We just had never done it before. And so there's this element of courage that you step into. And then also this like, this knowing that we're gonna figure this out. Failure's not an option. Yes, and so, you're not always gonna know everything at the beginning, but the, the, the idea here is to start with, yes, I believe we can do this, absolutely. And then you decide that you're gonna do it. You know, and again, you know, when you talk about the integrity part of it, like um, working with our airport, uh, I talk about the airport a lot there, mm -hmm. but um, working with the airport, um, we are the beta testers for a lot of the stuff that the airport does. That's so true. they'll come to us and say, hey, we know that your team is this, would you be willing to test yes. this system out for us? So like one of the things that we were doing several years ago is they wanted to do a double authentication for coming on the airport property. So one of the the security managers called and reached out to us and asked if we could be the first ones to start doing it. So whenever we would go through, we'd have to show our ID, they'd have to search the vehicle, but we'd have to put in a PIN code also yep. that showed that driver was that person because it was a specialized code for that person. So. Again, we always volunteer to help it because we want to make systems better and we want to be that go-to person that they know that they can reach. Trust, too. And on top of that, we've had other events that they've hired us to do because they needed doors checked or they needed a secure person there and they didn't have a security company had that clearance and they're like, hey, if you can get BAC to do it, we'll let them because they know our systems and our procedures because we always ask for permission, not for forgiveness. We want to make sure that what we're doing is correct because there's a lot of areas and fields there. And yes. 
they know that our integrity there. They know that we're there as a team member for them. They can count on us. And if something's going to go wrong, they know that we're going to take care of it immediately and we're going to uh, come there. I, you take for that instance is, uh, we had that security violation that one time that that person said that he was part of the air crew and we asked him four times and we kept asking the guy and then we got to the guard shack and well technically that wasn't a violation because he was never he was not he was not there but it, it they they thought it was and we had to go and explain it and they understood they were there and we had an accountability because we had the cameras in the vehicle yep. it showed it in tsa and everybody felt that we were 100 percent. we told the truth everything was there and they appreciate that because they didn't have that kind of accountability on their side. They, they had no idea that we had that much there where we asked these questions. And it's sometimes just bringing the information forward to let them know. And now in their eyes, they know that we keep we're that, yeah, yeah, we're solid. And that's that was the object that we were trying to get to them. It's like, hey, we're not lying to you. Everything we're telling you is true. Here, here's the video. Here's the video of it. And when she saw the video, she's like, this is closed. I mean, this is a done deal. We, we you Everything you guys said, you did. So... You know, and that's important is it's like, it's not just the accountability that the customers are asking you in those contracts. It's like, what are the layers that you're going to now support the team with? And having onboard recording systems is, it's, it's meant for a number of, of reasons, but one of the pieces is accountability, is that we need the team to understand that, hey, safety is important. You need to wear your seatbelt, you're, you're on camera, and and your manager can see whether or not that's that's something that you're practicing but on the other flip side to that is that we support our team member by having that onboard recording system because in the event that somebody hits them it's really clear what happened and i can't tell you how many times we've just been so grateful that we've had that level of accountability inside the car because it supported the driver a hundred percent you know, it's the one thing that doesn't have an opinion or how it happened. It shows how it happens. And it's very clear. There's yes. no, there's no um, uh, emotions into it. There's no feelings into it. There's nothing there. It, it shows the accident. It shows somebody doing something and it's accountable and it makes them accountable. And, you know, that has been a huge part of us uh, in our company is just having that accountability for what happens inside the cab, what happens outside the cab, it, it, what was said, what wasn't said. Um, it, it gives so many different layers that we're able to uh, support some of our cases and so support some of the uh, the staff. And just like you yes. said, is just letting them know that they said the appropriate things and this is really what happened. And again, interpretation of things is different. Um, and when somebody sees an accident, four people see four different angles of yeah. what happened. Every one of them is right, but this is the one that tells the whole entire story usually. Yes. Yeah. yes. And you know, that I think is something that we've worked really hard and uh, hard on is showing people that this isn't about, um, accountability is how we love you because we don't grow unless we have some sort of accountability in our lives that's getting us to that next stage. And with our team, accountability is in our core values because we're doing what we say we're gonna do. And, and if we have something that we need them to do, then, then they know that w they've got this extra layer of I'm doing it right. And it's just, it's really blossomed some of the individuals that have worked with us because they know that it's not just loosey goose. And it also keeps that, that culture going because the people that we want to work with, they stay with the organization because they know that they're not, they're not in the middle of monkey business. It's not a circus around here. It's, it's, this is best practices and we stick together on this and, and we are all following the process. So well, we all like to think everything's hunky dory and everything's perfect, but you know, I mean, we have 240 souls that work for us that all think that they're trying to do the best job they can possible. And if they stick to the policies and procedures and how we do things, it really runs very well. And, and, um, and we have people go outside those bounds sometimes on a good level. And sometimes they go outside those on a, on a level that is not good. And this gives us an ability to do some course corrections and get them on the right level. And, you know, sometimes it's just training and getting people involved. And Almost always it's training. I, I think that people, truly most people they want to do what's right and they're just doing the best job that they can and so when you can come along somebody come alongside somebody and coach them in a way that uh, raises them up to that next space 
and lets them know that they matter. And there's nobody that leaves BAC or EMT or pretty much anything else that we're involved in as so much as it's up to us that doesn't understand what led up to the situation of this conversation or this um, separation. And you know, we have a lot of time and invest in some of these people and stuff like that too. So we want their outcome to be the best for us yes. as is we do for them because time is money, money is time. And um, if we put all this time invest in somebody, if we can just do a small course correction and get them into in line with our beliefs and how we want to be doing things and they're well, willing to process our yeah. processes that have been developed over time they, they, they don't have to share our belief around it we just need them to follow the process yeah if they if they can get on board with that it, it's better for us to do a small course correction and get them on to, on the, yeah. our page than it is to try to retrain somebody and do it all over again so um some people say that we're really great at second chances, but sometimes we're really great at just realizing maybe we didn't give that training to you as we should have in the very beginning. And yeah. here's us giving us saying, we're sorry, we want to train you and get you to the appropriate way that you didn't get trained and then document it and make sure that they know that this is documented and they have been trained in this way. And we want to get it because we want to make sure that they're successful for our customers also. Yeah, and I think that having accountability measures in place in your organization also shows you if somebody's in the wrong seat because yeah. that that's real. You know, and, and sometimes at the time they want to work for an organization because they believe in it and the only position that was available at that time was this position. But as things open up, they would ask if they can switch to a different position. Anywhere like in the state or the city or something like that, you work for a big organization. Sometimes you feel that this is the best one that you want to go into at the time, but it really doesn't fit your needs. So how can we retool that person? They've already know our culture. They already know our business. They already know the employees, but they might not know the CSA side of it. So they might want to just get move from a driver to a CSA position or they might want to go into DGM or they might want to go into sales. They might want to go into something yeah. else that they might really flourish in. And sometimes we notice it on a person saying, hey, you're a great driver, but man, your communication skills are amazing. Yes. We'd really like to see you in this department. Would you want to move over? And in this department, this this wage goes up to this, uh, this amount of hour. And then you have more set hours on this one than it would be the other one. Are you willing to make that change? And so we see, uh, and we had a perfect example. Steve and Steve saw a, a very individual that was working for us in one department, and he moved into a different department, yeah. and he really thrived thrived in that department, did very well, got big compliments on it. So um, that was somebody working from a DGM, working as one of our... Um, like Detail maintenance thing. Grounds, yeah. Grounds people. And they were really great and moved into another position. So we're always looking for that next star. Well, and you know, sometimes through those accountability measures, you realize that this individual is not a good fit for that position because they're not able to maintain a schedule or like we've had situations where somebody hasn't been um, as good of a driver as they initially there they had a clean record and they were they had the experience of having their license for this many years but then they like hit an inanimate object or something like Feeling that. Feeling up, they might hit the yellow pole or something like that because yeah, they weren't paying attention. And that tells us right away, especially if they're new in that position, that it's not the position for them. But then we explore before we just let this person go, or it could be somebody that's worked for you for a while. Their attitude is right. It's just they can't seem to um, fit well in this other area. Is there an opening, not creating a job for them, but is there an opening that the organization has that you can retain that team member? Because we all know how challenging it can be to um, have everybody pass the checkpoints and attitude and um, in the core values. Drug piece. testing, criminal yeah. background checks, getting them through the airport, getting the badging, getting dibs badges on the Air Force Base, yeah. getting them a badge at the airport, getting it's them a, a badge lot. at the whole uh, hospitals. I mean, it is a gamut of things that we have to get these guys Oops. through. So if there's a way that we can retain them and maybe put them in a different position and it's open or something's opening up, we might put that person in that position. So absolutely, don't, don't think just because they don't work in one area, they might work in another area really well, and especially if they've already uh, taken uh, 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 a liking to your culture and they're doing really well and, and they get along with people. Yeah, yes. they have to fit well with the team too. 
So that is another piece that without accountability measures, you wouldn't be able to identify that. And it would put you really in this reactive situation where you're constantly reacting to the problems of the minute because you're not getting in front of it or getting ahead of it and seeing, oh, I could see where this could be a potential situation that we need to address. So there are, um, I mean, and those are great examples of, of how we have accountability measures within uh, customers, within our, our staff members, but then like bringing that to a personal level, Charlie, like what are some personal accountability pieces that you have in your own life that you like hold the line on? Is there anything that comes to mind that there's just things that you just do or you don't do because it's the right thing for you? Well, I mean, I'll say one thing, like we're uh, selling one of our cars and uh, one of our vehicles, uh, our Range Rover, and we're getting ready. And um, we had a, a line break on something like that and we kind of did a quick fix on it. But um, I, I wanted to make sure it was fixed correctly, the fully way and making sure the lines were completely repaired, refixed, re-put in. Um, instead of just doing one side of an axle, we did both sides of the axle because the other one could go out because the last thing we're gonna do is sell something to somebody that maybe that they know or we know and then all of a sudden it breaks down because we didn't do the right thing or we didn't fix it. We fixed it to a certain point, but we could have fixed it where knowing maybe the other side's gonna go out. I mean, that's the integrity part of, of making sure that we are, uh, it costs us more money and we didn't make as much money on it, but we're not a car sales people. You know, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing and giving somebody the right vehicle or, or telling somebody about a problem that's happening or what's going on. What can we do to fix this? And how can I make it better to you? You know, how can you be, uh, be that person that they know that if something happens, they're going to be able to, you're, you're going to make it right for them, I guess is what I'm looking for. You know, and I think that that is like a, that is a level that you have demonstrated to the team and our family that we're going to do the right thing. When we borrow something, it comes back to that individual either at the level that we received it or, or better. better. Yeah. And um, or when something goes wrong, instead of freaking out on everybody and losing it, it's like we're going to handle this and then we're going to understand how we're not gonna have this happen again. Like we're gonna come back at the end and kind of debrief. I think that's teaching our kids that too. I mean, as we were saying that we had some problems with some of the toys, they felt like they came back, they were gonna get in trouble for not telling us what happened. But yeah. on the other side, we wanna know what happened so they don't have a safety issue or things like this. And you know, I'm explaining to them that they have to let us know what's going on and they have to let us uh, have that point, you know? And then, you know, it, it's just, uh, I think it's really just doing the right thing. Well, in, in our eyes, the right thing is um, doing, like being true to who we are and who we are, are people that um, we want to see others successful. We want to see that, that uplifting outcome. And it doesn't always, sometimes we have to make some deposits into that, but the return is always there. When you do the right thing and you step up and even if it's gonna cost you a little bit, you're building deposits into your reputation for your your relationships that you have in business and personally. And I've even explained it to our youngest in a, in a kind of a harsh way. I just said, hey, I understand that you made this decision and you know that this isn't in line with our family values. And if you continue this behavior, you're gonna have to change your last name. <laughs> and he was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? And I said, yeah, I can't have people with my last name running around acting like this. Like, especially my children, this isn't going to work. And uh, he got the message. But it was something that absolutely, uh, it's, it's a big deal. And if you are planning on scaling your business, you need to understand that accountability and integrity go together. You can't have one without the other. It's just, I just don't see how it, can't, it can be a thing. It's tough. It's tough. Um, you know, when you work with some of these other people that you just really got to find out uh, who they are. I mean, sometimes when we work with other vendors, we don't want to just know about the company, but who's running the company, who's doing it, who's the leadership, what's going on with it. And are those people in, in, uh, in the same uh, alignment as we are, you know, I mean, when we're sending guests over and doing some other stuff, you know, I mean, um, 
we work with partners in here uh, in Alaska, but there's not a whole lot of them because I don't think some of their values or some of their things that they are not the same core values that we have and the yeah. training is. And we don't want to put our name and stamp on that sometimes. So, you know, you have to look for those partners and those other people that are going to be the same like-mindedness of you because if you're handing your customer over to them or you're doing something with them, um, are they going to steal that customer? Are they going to try to promote that customer? Are they going to they going to go ahead and treat your customer the same way we would? Are we going to get a phone call about it saying they weren't happy because their driver um, didn't speak English, uh, you know, and they didn't think that they got a chore like they were supposed to? So we want to make sure that we're working with like-minded people the same that we are. Um, and that's one of the great things that we work with the partnerships and the hotels and yeah. some of the food vendors and some of the other people that we work with that they know that if we ask them for it, it's guaranteed they're going to be taken care of and they never have to worry about it. You know, they know that the bill is paid. They don't have to worry about it. Um, and it's so neat when you go places like I, I've forgotten my wallet before and I went to go pick up a part or do something. We haven't had an account there. And like, hey, Charlie, just take it and come back and pay us later. We know who you are. Or, you know, and they you know, you know find you. yeah, you know, and you're leaving AIH or something like this with a, you know, $1,200 generator and you're like, shit, I forgot my card. I'll call you guys back and 15 minutes but they know your company they know your stance they know who you are and they, they're not worried about it you know and then they don't they don't get freaked out about it and they're like hey you know let's come back and we'll take care of it you know and that's what you know you want to have in your company and your values is people that you know when you walk in the door they know that you're gonna treat them with respect you're gonna go ahead and respect their stuff and you're gonna go ahead and and, and the right thing when yeah and not ask for lots of extra extras when you know you don't really need it don't complain about things you don't really need to you know I mean let the small stuff go <laughs> yeah you know I think that's really important in just relationships in general especially if you're working with team members you don't have to pick them apart on everything that you think they need to work on or that you need you think they need to coach them through it's like start with the bigger stuff like make sure that you are um, in relationship with your vendors or your customers or your team members that it, you're exuding this like I respect you and especially now in working with the younger group uh, the, the the next generation that's coming in as as team members they don't give respect until they've received respect. And that is absolutely a shift that we've been seeing in this workforce is it's uh, you, you need to, to show that honor on the front. And honestly, there isn't any reason why you shouldn't, but I noticed in this particular case that you almost have to win a hearing with the, with the younger generation by being respectful and um, and assuming the best. Well, they're pumped so full of information on social media that this is the way it should be. And, you know, as, as more as we want to be mentors for our kids and our younger generation, um, there's some influencers out there that tell them differently. Yeah. And so they listen to those things. And sometimes it, I, I saw a great quote the other day. It says, your kids respect you and love you and think you're the smartest person until they become teenagers. And then they know everything they do it more stupid everything else like that and then all of a sudden you know it comes in their 20s or 30s they start having kids and they start having problems with their kids and all of a sudden they come back to us and start asking us questions and information because now we're the all we're the almighty we've already been through this and you know what it's steps in their lives that they have to figure things out and and we were not the wise people we weren't that we, we were learning things as we were growing up in our businesses and things like that and you're really og uh, on the job training, OGT, yeah. really is important because as you grow in your company and grow in your spiritual, whatever else it is, you're going to have more knowledge to be able to give that other people. And you're going to have the more of the patience. You're going to have more of the uh, knowledge you might be able to do to get somebody through a, a tough spot in their life or a something going on in their job. But you know, when you're younger, you don't have that life education. You don't have that experiences that we do now. And uh, we're hoping that uh, these people look at that and say, hey, we're only looking for the best for them. Yeah, and I think that we're also living proof that you, you don't have to have a bunch of uh, information or the wisest people around you as a young person to start your business and to start growing your business. Could you imagine where we'd be at though if we listen to people and oh we had gosh. that in the very beginning now? I mean, you I know. I mean, we're shepherding our own children right now and we see how they're just light years ahead of the stuff that we knew yes. at their age. And yeah, and then some of the business owners that we mentor and some of the team members that we mentor, absolutely. Like, 
it's we I, I think that we probably would be a few more steps ahead but way further we ahead. <laughs> tend to have had like moments in our business where uh, because of the tools and the systems and the accountability measures that we put into place we've taken large jumps so it's been like a large step and that's been nice growth steps yes yes, yes. but Really, it's taken those accountability accountability measures, whether it's in the form of like an onboard recording system or it's processes and procedures. Like those are the things that we, those are our guardrails that have allowed us to scale. And if you're looking to scale your business, you absolutely need to have these processes documented. This is something that somebody needs to go to and be able to look up this best practice that you've understood and, and reference it word for word and that you will not be able to scale if you do not have documentation of best practices in, in your business. So really, um, I would say that if I had to really pinpoint one, one system that we put in place that allowed us to understand um, that a level of accountability for our team, it would have been the incident reporting system. Draw systems and things like that, yeah. Yeah, so we have, um, that's been a, a safety piece key because it's an area where team members report near misses, they report unusual situations that have happened on their shift that we might need to get in front of, or it's something that's happened that management needs to know and it's a written document. And it's something as simple as a, as a form that they can scan a QR code or they can go to our internet page and fill out, but it's a direct communication link from the front line to the leadership team that's reviewed regularly throughout the day. You know, there's nothing worse than um, you have one of your clients call you about an incident or a near miss incident, and you have no idea about it because you haven't been informed. But on the management team, we have access to the job forms and things like that. So what we try to do is, is when we find out about something, we want to, I wouldn't say tell on ourselves. We want to be good partners and call our aunts and say, hey, we had the situation happen just 15, 20 minutes ago, just in case you get advised to this, this is what's happened. Yes. Here's what we're doing to fix it. Here's how we're going to make sure this doesn't happen again. And then when somebody goes and says, oh, you should have seen what BAC did today. They yeah, they've know. already called us. They already talked to us about this and this is what they're doing and everything like that. Then to them, they've already checked that box. It's already taken care of and it's not the, a lot of effort they have to put in to make sure that doesn't happen again. And or find out what happened in the investigation yes. trail. But really, it shows that we are on it. We're intentionally. Well. We're intentionally fixing the problem, looking at it, letting you know that it was a problem or could have been a problem, and here's what we're going to do to fix it. And, you know, I can tell you our vendors are so happy when we when we bring that up and we tell them. And the same with, uh, you know, talking to our doctors that run our AMT program. Same thing as talking yeah. to the nurses in the hospitals. Hey, we realize that, you know, we should be carrying these half-drip CIV kits uh, when we're coming out to you now because we're not doing full drips. So we're going to take care of this and make sure that we're taking care of this for the next time when we come out here to do this. You know, we want the knowledge and information to make sure that we're, that we're taking care of our clients the best way possible. And one of the ways we can do it is letting them know if there's a problem or an issue and then we let them aware of it and how we're going to fix it. And how we learned that was working with them. I mean, yeah. really looking at them and going to some of their meetings and how they have accountability, what they have to, to their hires up of why this plane might have been a few minutes late or What's this going is going on. on. Yeah. yeah. Or, well, and the goal is safety and it's also to prevent situations from repeating. Yes. Because nothing worse going to the same client and telling them that you had the same problem four times that week, but you've already find a system to do it and it hasn't worked. You know, we yeah. got to make sure it works and how we're going to fix it. And so um, you, as you become business owners and as you become growing your business and elevating it, um, you're going to come into all different problems and issues as your, as your fleet turns in from 20 to 40 to 60 to 80 to 100. You know, you, you can't have that one mechanic that's going to fix all your entire fleet now because they don't have it, nor do you have the resources for them to do it. So you have to always be looking futurally. What are we going to be looking at? How much more vehicles are we going to need next year? Do we keep vehicles over 100,000 miles or do we keep them in an area that yeah. we're going to be able to maintain them, work on them and keep them under warranty and then dump them off and have a secondary market take care of it? You know, I mean, growing aspects of what you're looking at because keeping a car for three or 400,000 miles may not be the best financial decision for you anymore because you have more downtime than you do uptime.
Right, and that relates to other service type businesses because you understand that you need to be in a place where you're constantly putting yourself in a proactive position. Like that's the goal of systems and accountability is to keep moving you into this proactive position and not the, sometimes we just, we just didn't know we had to talk about this scenario that happened and, and you will be reacting to that. But having the ability to um, not over schedule yourself so you can have the time to be intentionally thinking about what's going to be up on the front. And, and really a question that I ask myself with every jump that we've had with business growth is it's okay. What new capabilities do we now need to learn or gain in order to hold on to this business? Because what gets you to the promised land is not going to keep you there. You will need to learn new capabilities. And I would say that you're going to find those capabilities within automation and systems supporting you through these accountability pieces. So I agree. It's been a it's, it's been, been a, a big, journey. Yes, it's been it a has. journey. And, and know, every day is a journey. I mean, every day it's something new comes up that we have to look at and how can we how can we automate that? How can we make that better? How can we not have to manual input stuff? How can we get rid of paper? How can we be on the digital system? Um, how can people get information right now instead of tomorrow? How can we book people not a week out? How can we book them two weeks out, a month out so they can have their lives too? I mean, it's always, yeah. always something that is elevating to the top of a new issue or problem that we look at and say, how can we make this better? And I think that really like boils down to leadership, keeping themselves out of crisis and keeping yourself out of that reactive mode because optimization and creativity thrive outside of survival mode. You don't have time to think about these like grand ideas if you're just getting through the day. And if you've been living in crisis mode or you've just been drinking from a fire hose, you've got to figure out how you're going to move yourself out of that situation so that you can be, you can create space to start optimizing the business. I mean, business owners, we are the worst at that. And I, I tell you that we, uh, Nobody will ever do it as good as I am. Nobody's gonna ever gonna take Which care of the way. Why I am. we and, tell ourselves. But you know, I mean, in, in some highs, I think we were actually there at it because we were the only ones knowing how to do it. But teach somebody how to do it. You're not the only one. What if something happens to you and you're not the only person that can do it anymore? I mean, you know, as we all start get older, uh, things start happening, and we figured out that you know. Um, like teaching Stephen diverts. Uh, I, I remember teaching Stephen, and Stephen wanted to have the knowledge to do this. And you know, and that's kind of like my piece there. And, and it's not I didn't want to let it go, but I knew that I did it really well, and I worked with the clients. But Stephen does a great job too, and some, sometimes he does a little bit better job in some other things that I don't do. And I'm like, well, you know, hey, shoot, Stephen's great at this. And now Stephen's like, hey, can we teach Sarah? Because now Stephen's on deck when I'm not around or something like that. So can we teach some of the other management teams to do this? So Paul's helped us out with some of yeah. them. So we're teaching the other members, hey, we can. Have have them do it just as well as we can um, but it's in our own beliefs and, and I tell you this as business owners is that there is other people there's a friend of mine that has a, a shop here in town that feels that he has to do the accounting he has to do the payroll he has to do this stuff I'm like what the hell are you doing you should be the spokesman the salesperson of your company you should be the ones out doing this stuff but he feels that he is in a spot that he needs to make sure he does everything into it and and he runs a very efficient well company but, he's only but gonna his grow growth factor is only going to go so big because he gets stuck in these things where he has to do it he has to come back and take care of payroll he has to do this stuff and there's not just him there's other people that do it too and i'm like hire a payroll company hire these people if you were out selling the four hours a week that you were doing it you would bring in this much more money but we all had to learn at a certain pace and some people are uh, at this pace that they're at and they're comfortable yeah. and they don't want to leave that environment and it doesn't make them bad business owners. It's it doesn't make just, them anything. That's it's just, what's right for them. that's what's right for them. So for us is to scale it and to move it and to get it to another spot. Uh, but 
successfully and good and not take on more risk. I, we had a member, a couple of airlines calling us at the same time. and like, we can't take you all on the same time because we don't have the extra 20 vehicles that it's going to take to do it. But we can take this one on now. And if you wait six months, we can take you on. But taking two new clients on at this point, two large new clients, two new clients is well, not going to work for us right now. And, and then we don't want to get that customer to fail him or to fail the great customers we had already there yeah. that are expecting a certain level of there. So knowing what your expectations are, knowing what your limitations are, um, are going to be very big for you. I mean, because like I said, you, some of these people, you only have really one good chance to put a good face on there and you have to do the job and earning the A when your first day of school and keeping the A at the last day of school are two different things. Yes. And you know, everybody in the first day of school has an A when you walk in the door and you take that first test and you get an F and all of a sudden you're at a C level, you know, yeah. you're not at an A level anymore. And you want to keep that A level. You want to keep that 98 percentile uh, is what we look for is that 98 percentile. Yeah. There, there comes a time in business where you realize that a hundred percent is no longer achievable because you have too many elements in the middle of that delivery and it's going to count, um, it's going to take like incredible, everything flowing in the right, um, perfect direction in order for that to happen. And I remember in our business when uh, our goal for our airline clients and transportation is to have a minimal incident uh, percentage, meaning that there is no incidents that, that have happened on these transfers. And it used to be that we were at 100%. Now, I mean, in the summertime, we're doing an airport transfer every three minutes to the airport or from, um, the, airport. from the airport. And so with that type of volume, you absolutely, it, the variable, like you mentioned it, it wasn't the airline's fault that the client got, the, the passenger got sick on the airplane and they had to divert the plane back to the, the jetway and everybody, um, they had to get that person off and clean up the vomit and like that had nothing to do with the airline but it affected their on time or incident rating and that's an incident that's being filed on that flight that they had no control over and so that's what i mean about we shoot for a hundred percent but we hover in that 98 99 range and we're really proud of that yeah, and some of these we fall at 92%, but you know, there's factors involved in that the same as what we do. We might have a race downtown, they've diverted the track of all the way around in the middle of this race where we have somebody that got hurt or there was an accident, we had to divert around yeah. this stuff. So we look at those things too as saying, hey, it's still in our percentile and it's still, we didn't make it on time, but it's still a mark against us that we look at and say, how could we look at that? So like, uh, an instant for that is uh, we have radios in the vehicles and if we see an accident or something that's happening, we'll, we'll communicate. communicate that on the radio saying, hey, they have uh, northbound on L Street shut down. Everybody divert over to this side because we want to make sure that the oncoming people are not going to have the same problems as that one person. So instead of having one late, we don't want to have seven lates. We want to just take that one and hit that and we can explain that late in one, our weekly report or our monthly report with them. Um, when you go to these airlines saying, well, you know, we only accept 100% and we said, well, we understand that and we would live there. But if your planes were on a time at 100%, we could probably be at 100% too. We do not say that to but our But we think that, we think Charlie that to ourselves. You know, we, we only work with the factors that we have and what we can work with. Yes. And, and, and Athena made a great uh, explanation on uh, one of the people getting sick on the plane. That gentleman never got on that plane thinking he was going to puke, but he did. And, um, you know, and he was removed off the plane at his choice but he was able to, it, it put us an hour behind. And that puts your ground crews an hour behind, that puts our ground crews an hour behind, that puts the hotel behind, it puts everybody. It's a domino effect, it's yeah. a ripple in the pond. You throw the, the, the rock in the pond, it's gonna cause a ripple, and the ripple finally goes away, but until the ne next ripple uh, appears, so. And that also is, I mean, you have to maintain some flexibility and some understanding. So it's, it is, when you're working in logistics, it absolutely. If everything worked on time perfectly every single time and it never was a groundhog day every single day, it would be easy to do. But the reason we're good at what we do is because we look for that we look for that and we have supervisors and we have extra drivers on board because we look we at get that. Ahead of it. We try to get ahead of it. Yeah. I'd rather have one late than seven lates. Don't don't keep chasing the ball. Make that your only one and get back on track. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I would say that in a nutshell, that is just a glimpse into how we see 
accountability and integrity being an absolute core part of running an organization that you're looking to scale. And it's how we run our lifestyle. It's, it's what we believe as, as uh, contributing humans in society, in our communities that we're involved in, and that we encourage in our, our, the people that we love to have those pieces. So at least for those that want to continue to grow and to capture opportunities. So it's good. Well, again, another great podcast that we get to bring to you guys and I hope you guys subscribe and check us out. Uh, we do this because we want to share our knowledge and our information to you and, and, and some people, you know, appreciate it and they like it and they want to hear it and what we have to say. And I hope this gives you a nugget. I call it a nugget is when you get something out of something. So, you know, if there's something you want to talk to us about or something like that, or you have some questions, you know, make some comments on it and let us help you out with those questions. Yeah. And you can also go to our website at www.raiseupmindset.com and we have our podcast episodes posted there. And we also have an area where you can submit a question that we'd love to answer for you uh, at one of our future episodes. So thank you so much for joining us. See you guys. Bye. Bye.